it's Sarah from All Coin Bus, ladies. And today I would like to just basically summarize 2018 and see what actually is worth mentioning. If you guys got any more ideas, obviously feel free to drop a comment, hit the like button, follow me on Twitter, All Coin Sarah, and let's get on with it. So after an immense 2017 filled with cryptocurrency market spikes, the following year was loaded with letdowns as a great majority of digital assets plunged well over 80% since their all-time highs. And 2018 was also filled with lots of headlines about digital currency regulations, exchange hacks, and the postponed exchange traded funds. And it's safe to say that 2018 was the exact opposite of 2017 as far as the year-over-year -year cryptocurrency market price changes. So as you guys can see, on December 31st, 2017, so exactly one year ago, the top 10 market cap and the prices of each coins were vastly different than today. I mean, the top five coins had considerably more fiat value at the time with Bitcoin trading at 13 grand per coin, XRP being at $2.12, Ethereum at $721, it's absolutely mad, and Bitcoin Cash 2.5 grand, which is even madder, and Cardano at 69 cents. And throughout the entire year, all of the biggest coins by market valuation have lost more than three quarters of the net worth since December 2017, and the entire ecosystem market's valuation saw an all-time high of more than half a trillion dollars, and today that metric is just above 100 billion. One of the first reoccurring events are worth mentioning that I want to talk about is actually the South Korean regulation. And throughout most of January and February, talks of digital currency regulations began to heighten across the globe. And these two months in particular saw a lot of regulatory discussions seeming from South Korea. And headlines deriving from Korean government officials were so frequent and very similar to the countless People's Bank of China ban announcement in the past. At the end of January 2018, though, for the first time ever, a South Korean court actually ruled that Bitcoin's economic value. And moreover, the country introduced a nationwide cryptocurrency account system, which banned the anonymous trading of digital assets in South Korea. In addition to all the news about South Korea, the Japanese exchange CoinCheck was comprised for about $532 million worth of the cryptocurrency NEM on January 26. And while digital asset proponents witnessed yet another historic exchange hack, the platform's loss didn't affect market that much. Another hack actually took place this past April when the Indian cryptocurrency exchange CoinSecure's wallet was breached for 2.7 worth of BTC. At this time, the company blamed the CSO um, for playing a role in the incident. As well as last September, Indian law and force filed charges against a few suspects and explained that an insider heard helped facilitate the crime. The next one, the third one I want to talk about is the ICOs. In 2018, quarter one saw the beginning of big ICOs having loads of troubles with special agencies like the US SEC and the CFTC. One of the first busts last year was when the Texas Department of Banking Commissioner issued a cease and desist order to an alleged decentralized cryptocurrency bank. And the BitTrust Connected Arise Bank was actually one of the first of many ICOs that started having troubles with the law. In February, the cryptocurrency community had learned that 46% of 2017's ICOs had already failed. And all year long, there have been numerous crackdowns throughout the world specifically targeting IC operations. US regulators, for example, charged music producer DJ Khaled and the boxer Floyd Mayweather this past November for failing to disclose payments they took for ICO promotions. And another interesting story this year was the introduction of the world's first state issued cryptocurrency in Venezuela. Well, no one's really sure if the petrol works yet, but all year long Venezuela's president Nicolas Maduro has toted the benefits of the oil-backed token. And this past November, the Ministry for Communication and Information enacted a new law which established the Petro for commercial transactions inside the country. And further, just recently Maduro raised the petrol's price from 3,600 to 9,000 Bolivians. And the entire world has been watching the Venezuelan people suffer from economic hardship while Maduro and fellow associates toy around with the so-called multi-asset but cryptocurrency 
created in secrecy. Next one will be that even though markets pumped all year long, cryptocurrencies did see a lot of institutional interest this year. Crypto advocates will remember patiently waiting for a US Fed ETF's approval once again in 2018 and back in July. The CBOE filed an application for a BTC based ETF that will be tethered to the Vanex Solidex Bitcoin Trust. The same month, the SEC actually postponed its decision concerning five Bitcoin related ETFs followed by the NYSC ARCA. And this was the case throughout all of 2018, pretty much, as Bitcoin ETFs were delayed all year long. US regulators had also asked for public opinion concerning CBOE's ETFs filing and received an overwhelming response. So on December 6, actually, the SEC delayed its decision again and explained it will decide on the fate of the Vanek Solidex Bitcoin ETF in February 2019. Moreover, actually, Bitcoiners have been waiting for the backed Bitcoin daily futures contract offered by the ICE, which was supposed to start trading this month, but the product was also delayed. One of the last one, but definitely not the least, will be the Bitcoin Cash Network, which had quite an interesting year, to say the least, as it underwent two forks in 2018. And the first fork in the spring was quite successful, actually, resulting in a bunch of new features like uh, re-enable opcodes. And actually, since the update, Bitcoin Cash saw a huge influx of development, including many new applications like Memo Cash, Block Press, Joystream, Wormholm, and actually many more. And in the, in the first week of September, the Bitcoin Cash Network process millions of transactions on a daily basis during a week-long stress test. And on September 1st, Bitcoin Cash miners confirmed 2 million transactions in 24 hours. And statistics showed that the Bitcoin Cash chain had processed 85,000 transactions per hour and 23 transactions per second. However, actually after the stress test, the planned hard fork for November 15th became contentious and the fork resulted in a blockchain split. And after getting the most proof of work and a majority of the infrastructure support, the Bitcoin ABC side of the fork was revealed with the BCH ticker. And the other network is listed as Bitcoin as BSB across global exchanges. The Bitcoin Cash ABC community is steadily moving on from the split and the decentralized cryptocurrency saw actually a 140% increase in value over the last few weeks. So what I actually want to say is that most crypto markets have done much better during the end of December and many enthusiasts are curious about what next year will bring. Of course, most cryptocurrency supporters believe the long haul will pay off in the end and there will always be some hardlets along the way. There was a whole lot of other interesting events in 2018 and 2019 is sure to be just as intriguing. One thing is certain for sure, no matter where it is, there's never a dual day in Bitcoin land. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you have learned a lot during 2018. In the bear market, I was so long and brought so many opportunities for everyone to learn, especially if you have joined during the all time high and I hope you learned and you're not gonna repeat your mistakes. So let me know what you actually thought of 2018 bear market. Was it needed? I personally think it was and I'm really glad it happened actually. Call me crazy, but I am glad. I am down, but I'm glad. 2019 will definitely bring some other changes and it will require loads of improvement from everyone. So let me know what you think 2019 will bring and I will make a separate video obviously what 2019 in my opinion will bring to us. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Follow me on Twitter, all Queen Sarah, subscribe to Combust Ladies, and I'll catch you later. Have a good time, guys. Bye-bye.